Can soccer explain for Americans? Now nah, we react to a. Can't even speak, bro. We react to another video. Um, it looked like, it was like a video. It was kind. Of, I think it was actually explained by European or something like that because he definitely had a, a strong accent. Um, everybody was saying I should check out this video right here, um, which is I says explain for Americans. So this is literally, this is for me. You know what I'm saying? This is. Now I did learn a lot though. Y'all can go still go check the video. It's on my channel right now. Just go to my soccer playlist. Um, so you can you can check this out. Um, I learned a lot. Like I learned a lot. Um, now, it's I'm still kind of shaky still, but you know I'm still trying to get the the underlying basics and stuff like that. Um, but Hopefully this explains a lot. You know what I'm saying? Hey, if y'all want more videos like this, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Also, comment down what videos y'all want me to do. All right? Literally, if you comment down any video idea, I will literally do it. Every single one. It don't matter what it is. Let's see what it be time about. Yes, sir. I hate watching soccer. They have to bring the stretcher out at least six times a game. So I've been wanting to start following soccer for a while now, but as an American, I always found it complicated. Not like how they play. Most three-year-olds can kind of understand more or less how it works. <laughs> I just mean how everything kind of works in Europe. You know, I would follow the World Cup, and I grew for the United Bro, States. you know what's crazy? I was trying to look up um a little thumbnail and stuff to use, and I'm like, what do you even call, like, you know, it's the National M the NBA, National Basketball Association, NFL. You know what I'm saying? That's what they call it in um. In America, but I'm trying to figure out what do they call it in in European. Like, what do you call it? Is it just called European soccer. Like, only type only type of title I can give soccer or football. Only type of title I can give it is number one soccer or football. Um, and then the World Cup. That's the only thing. I don't know what type of association. Like, how do I explain um all the team? Like, I, I'm like I really gotta learn everything. Honestly, bro, I gotta learn everything. Eights if they made it, and then. I grew for Ice World Cup, and I grew for the United States. I think he said it too. Everything kind of works in Europe. You know, I would follow the World Cup, and I grew for the United States if they made it. And then I grew for Iceland because clearly they've all been practicing that clapping, and they're really good at it. But that only happens once every four years. So I turn on my TV, and it would be a, like a random game, like Parma versus Bologna. And first, I'd make sure that I wasn't watching the Food Network, but then <laughs> I had no frame of reference for this game. Like, are these teams good? You know, is this a big game? Which one of these guys is Pele? You know, I, I didn't know. And I had all these other questions. Like, you know, why, why are teams getting kicked out of leagues? Why are they all rolling around on the ground so much? How are guys getting traded to different countries? And why, why does everybody in the stands have a scarf? So a few months ago, I tried to start figuring it all out. And I started watching some matches. That's the first thing. They aren't soccer games. They are football matches. And I bought FIFA for my Xbox, and I bought a scarf and a Vuvuzela because that's like the rules or something. So anyway, this is all the info that I wish I'd known a year ago. This is my crash course of translating soccer. <laughs> Yo, this dude actually funny, though. What's up with these? I didn't see what it said. He didn't really buy a scarf. <laughs> Why did he say that, bro? FIFA Why did he say that out there, bro? Ago. This dude, is my buddy. crash course of translating soccer <laughs> into American. I'm going to assume that you kind of know the rules. The biggest difference between American sports is how offsides works and the clock. Lots of people get upset about the clock. It goes up instead of down. Get over yourself. It doesn't really matter. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. It's funny because I, I I said something about the clock too, but I thought it was going downwards. So yeah, it was going upwards. Oh yeah, yeah. I know. I know. If I seen that, I would have been like, I would have been just like, my mind would have been blown. I think I kind of remember it too. Like my mind would have been blown. Like what the the because it because it'd be said like forty four minutes and the time is going up. But like bro, this time is already the lo longest itself, bro. It's forty four minutes. You mean tell me it's about to be more time? You know what I'm saying? Like how long, talk about they talk about uh baseball games is long. No, how long is these games? What they an hour a, a damn quarter? Like what the fuck? Americans also get mad because the clock doesn't stop and games pretty much end whenever the ref feels like it. And you actually adjust to this pretty quickly. The game's an hour and a half long. You'll have your chances to score. And if you can't score, then it's not the clock's fault. <laughs> okay. Some people, and, and when I say people, I'm referring both to discussions I've had with other Americans as well as like myself six years ago. So people think soccer is too slow. And when Americans look at a soccer field, Something in our minds, we think that it's like playing hockey or playing basketball just on a big grass field. 
And in those sports, guys like go full tilt a lot, like most of the game. So when two players are just standing there passing the ball back and forth, we wonder, like, why aren't they trying to move forward? Just go. And on the other side, we expect the defenders to be attacking the guy with the ball right. rather than just standing five feet back and letting him do what he's doing. The key difference is that soccer fields are much, sorry, football pitches are much larger than basketball courts and hockey rinks. And if you try to full court press for the whole soccer game, you would be exhausted and you would probably lose. See, the, oh. the pace of the soccer game is actually... Oh, I think I get it, though. Okay, 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 hold on. You would be exhausted and you would probably lose. Because don't you got to sprint back? Because if, cause if they get a, if they if they kick it far enough, like, because I know, like, let me just go back. So, like, say it was a, say it was his other teammate was, like, right here, right? Down here. And he kicks it all the way over there. And everybody then push all the everybody on defense then pushed up, you know what I'm saying? Now they have to sprint all the way back. And remember, the soccer field is about big. Like I'm talking about the soccer field, bro. Like, bro, sprinting on that shit is like doing eight miles a like an hour, bro. A th every thirty minutes is like eight miles. That's how big it is. You know what I'm saying, bro? You can't be doing that. That's what he said. Like, you you're definitely gonna be out of breath for sure. Press for a whole soccer game, you would be exhausted and you would probably lose. See, the, the pace of a soccer game is actually much closer to baseball. Most of the game is going to consist of guys just slowly passing the ball around, real peaceful, and then it's going to be all of a sudden followed by these short bursts of extremely fast action. Basketball players, it's estimated, run an average of two and a half miles during a game. See? Soccer players can run seven, if not ten miles. I said it! I literally said it! I said eight miles! I literally said it, bro! They shit big as fuck! Yo, this dude is literally a troll. This dude put Monopoly down. Y'all can see it. This dude put Monopoly, bro. What the fuck? Yo, this dude is funny. I ain't gonna lie. This, this is definitely a W video, bro. I gotta shout you out. Who, let, me see, let me see who recommended this video, bro. That's what I'm gonna start doing too. Whoever recommended videos, I'm gonna shout y'all in the video. All right. Um, your name is Cubix K U B X. Um, I don't know how to say your name, but thank you for recommending this video, bro. Because this video is perfect, bro. This is literally a perfect video. Burst of extremely fast action. Basketball players, it's estimated, run an average of two and a half miles during a game. Soccer players can run seven, if not ten, miles during one game. And remember, you only have three subs games, so most of these players will be playing the whole game. Right. One thing That's Americans so will appreciate is that other than halftime, there are no commercials. So it's like the anti-NFL, oh. which is great. Wow. It also means that no matter where the ball is, both teams are always potentially about 30 seconds away from scoring, which creates this kind of constant tension. It also creates a scenario where you can't ever really run to the bathroom or get a drink. <laughs> Soccer players seem to have a reputation for being lazy in the U.S. because they don't always pop right back up after going to ground and get right back into play. Certainly some players do embellish things, and some go over the top, but I don't really think that on the whole it's quite the issue that people make it out to be. So they get made fun of in Europe, too. So here's a fun experiment to try the next time you have a few minutes. Go to, like, a local field, and then quickly jog laps around that field for, like, ten minutes, and then suddenly sprint down the middle of the field as fast as you can. <laughs> and when you're halfway up the field, while you're still sprinting, have one of your friends to shove you over on the ground. <laughs> and if you can pop right back up and keep sprinting, then you can keep complaining about those guys. <laughs> a lot of the time, they're just taking a little rest. And everyone will either just keep playing around them, or both teams will be a little tired. So oh, so, okay, so that's something I haven't seen. So people would do that. I mean, that makes sense, though. That definitely makes sense. I understand that. I understand that for sure. I understand that. Every one Cause, because you running around all day, like, come on. You know what I'm saying? I, that's now. You want to say the biggest thing that blows my mind, other than the clock situation, is definitely the 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 um, the substitutions. Like, they don't get out the game. Like, bro, how? Like, who are these people? Like, Iron Man, my nigga. You don't ever get thirsty or tired or nothing. Like, bro, my stamina is terrible, and I play American football. Baseball and I ran track, so I'm a, I was a three sport athlete and I still had terrible stamina. You mean to tell me they run around for three hours, three hours a quarter, and you mean to tell me they still being able to make crazy like Messi out here still doing crazy things like, like what, bro? I couldn't literally, uh, bro. Worrying about those guys, bro. A lot of the time they're just taking a little rest. And everyone will either just keep playing around them. Or both teams will be a little tired, so who cares? It's not a Matthew Riley not out there. 
The other reason for guys slowly passing the ball around is that one of the strategies currently employed by most teams is to just to maintain possession as much as possible. Obviously, this is no different in American football or why Russia is really good at hockey. The other team can't score when you have the ball. So teams will just pass the ball back and forth and even pass it back to their own goalie because it's better to go backwards with the ball than to maybe make a risky pass and let the other team have the ball. Wait, but if the ball goes, what if you throw it back? What if you what if you have the ball? Like, can't you score for your own team? Like, can't you score against yourself? Like, if you kick it, say you try to kick it back to the goalie, and the goalie fuck around and miss the ball, and it goes in the goal. Does that count as a goal for the other team? On occasion, you'll see a team make, make a risky pass and let the other team have the ball. On occasion, you'll see a team make, like, 50 passes without the other team touching the ball, which can take a really long time, but then they'll go down and they'll score, and that's like as good as it gets. It's all about waiting for the precise moment for things to align and then all going together at the right moment. In terms of like positioning and formations, you'll usually have three or four numbers, like 4-4-2 four, four, or 4-3-3 four, three, three, or 4-2-3-1. These numbers will always add up to 10 and then the goalie is just assumed. Different positions include the center backs who just stay as defenders and then the full backs are both the left and the right back who will defend, but then they'll also usually join the attack as well. And then we have midfielders, like a center midfielder, who can go both ways. Um, a center attacking midfielder or a center defender. See, the thing about it is, though, I feel like in the game, I won't be able to really tell who's the cent the center middle or the center D. What's the CDM mean? But, you know, I, I won't be able to tell who's who because, like, like I said, when I see highlights, it's usually like, a lot of people just running toward, like, everybody just be running this way. You know what I'm saying? Everybody just be running that way. So it's like, I won't be able to know who's really, you know what I'm saying? Like, from the highlights I've seen, I've never really seen, like, a highlight of, like, uh, everybody set up pro properly. Like, I haven't seen that before. I've just seen, like, people always running. Oh, like, Messi got the ball. He juked 5,000 people and didn't score and shit. You know what I'm saying? That's what I see. So I don't really see, like, you know what I mean? So I can really tell, like, okay, that's the right back. That's the left back. That's the center. Like, I wouldn't even know. A midfielder who can go both ways. Um, a center attacking midfielder or a center defending midfielder. Oh, defending. And then up front, we have, like, a left wing and a right wing, sometimes a center forward, and a striker up front who will – it's his job to just score goals. One thing I'll mention that makes it easy to kind of get into soccer is that you can watch, legally watch, some old matches on YouTube. Um, this is unlike American sports. Like, why isn't there a website that I can go to to watch any game, like an iTunes for sports? It's so, like, I can pay $2 to watch any game in history. Like, all these games are on tape somewhere. They exist. But yeah. I can't watch a game in the 1986 World Series unless an international pandemic shuts down the world and there's no sports. And I just happen to put it on NBC or something. Like, come on. So anyway. Um, so keeping the ball... And attacking is referred to as positive football. You're always trying to move forward. This is what most teams do. This is what people like to watch a little more. It's kind of exciting. It's more exciting to watch that way. But, of course, there's always a yin to the yang. So the yin is this guy named Jose Mourinho. And he basically says, I don't want the ball. I'm going to stand back with my players in front of my goal, and you're not going to score. And then every Aww. once in a while, when you're falling asleep and all your players are up in my zone – we're going to steal the ball, and we're going to run down and score, which sounds a little bit risky, except that it actually does work if you do it well. And Jose's considered one of the best managers there is, and he has the trophies to back it up. He's won plenty of big tournaments with teams. Then I'm told if you tried to have that team keep the ball the whole time, like most coaches would, they would have been destroyed. They were too old, and they just would have got worn out and wiped out. But, but by playing this negative defensive strategy, they were able to win. And despite this, teams that employ the strategy seem to get a bad rap for playing negative as opposed to positive football because keeping the ball seems to be the end thing right now. So obviously there's more thought that goes into, into it than I've described here. Like Diego Simeone and Atletico Madrid has been using this negative strategy for years, and they've been successful with it. On the flip side, the guys who've risen to the top playing possession. See, my football. question is, isn't that kind of boring, though, if you like, you know what I'm saying? Like, because you all, all you want to do is play defense. You know, I mean, like, what if the other team want to play defense too? <laughs> you know what? Now, now what? Who gonna score? Do you feel know I me? Mean? Like, like I, I don't know how I feel about that strategy, but I guess I can't really say nothing because he's a a professional coach and I'm not. So my opinion means nothing. And they've been successful with it. 
On the flip side, the guys who've risen to the top playing possession football are also widely sought after. Two of the most well-known coaches right now are Jurgen Klopp and Pep Guardiola. And I highly recommend watching the series All or Nothing about Manchester City on Amazon Prime. It's about Guardiola's team a few years ago. And it's, it's quite clear from interviews with these guys that they're you know, quite thoughtful and well-traveled. I couldn't name a single baseball manager who can speak three languages. So speaking of Manchester wow. City, they play in England. There are four main football countries in Europe. There's England, Spain, Germany, and Italy. England has the Premier League, Spain has La Liga, Germany has the Bundesliga, and Italy has Syria. So to take one country... So, you know, okay, now that's what I have learned about. I was just saying, this is a W video, bro. Who, bro, shout out to you, bro, for real, though. Like, So I was listening to you talking about the leagues. Okay, so... I have heard about Premier League. Now I would say that I've heard I've heard about that before, um, but not everything else. So okay. So which one is the which one is the most popular? Is it England? I think it's England because that's the one I've heard of. All the same, but to take one country, England, the, the Premier League consists of twenty teams. Every team plays every other team once at home and once away, and these leagues don't have playoffs. You get three points for a win, oh, wow. one for a tie. The team with the most points at the end of the season wins. And this can and has come down to the final day of the season before. In the U.S., our leagues pretty much have the same oh, hand. Man. And for a tie, the team with the most points at the end of the season wins. Wait, so three a win equals three points? Team once at home. England, the, the Premier League consists of 20 teams. Every team plays every other team once at home and once away. Okay. And these leagues don't have playoffs. You get three points for a win, one for a tie. The team with the most points at the end of the season wins. And this can and has come down to the final day of the now, season. Now, I heard of Messi play for, like, Argentina or something like that. I've heard of that word or or that uh, country. What is that, a country or a – yeah, I think it's a country. I don't know. Bro. But, um, yeah, uh, I've heard of Argentina. So, it, which one – what league is that a part of? So now, I feel like – what something is telling me is that I feel like either Messi or Ronaldo, all these top players, I feel like they're from, like – they're not from like England or whatever. I feel like they're from like one from. Let's see, let's look at it again. I feel like one from probably like Germany, and one from like England or some shit like that, or and maybe one from Spain. But I don't know though. We gotta see. Pretty much have the same teams every year. So if you suck, the season's point, and these leagues don't have playoffs. You get three points for a win, one for a tie. The team with the most points at the end of the season wins. And this can and has come down to the final day of the season before. In the U.S., our leagues pretty much have the same teams every year. So if you suck, and even if you start to lose on purpose, you actually get rewarded with the top draft pick the next year. If you finish oh, wow. in last place in one of these leagues, they literally kick you out of the league. Oh! They call it relegation because that's a nicer sounding word. Before we keep going, here's a quick aside on the MLS. Major oh, League go. Soccer is the top league in the United States. Right. It's different in many ways than the European leagues. There's no relegation, so the teams do stay the same from year to year, and there is a salary cap. Talent-wise, I guess globally speaking, it seems to be an okay league, but certainly not on par with any of the European leagues. So under the Premier League, which is at the top, under them is a league called the English Football League Championship. The Three teams who finish at the bottom of the Premier League are relegated to the championship for the next season and replaced by three teams from the championship. The bottom three teams in the championship are relegated to League One. The bottom three in League One are relegated to League Two, whose losers go to the National League, whose losers are... Uh, no, nobody really cares about them except their moms at this part, but you get the idea. Unless you really get into the soccer, you'll never hear about anything below the Premier League again. But just so you're aware of what's happening down there. Oh, okay. So he said, so you're really not going to hear about the EFL championship. So just kind of like the XFL and shit like that. That's what this is. is. Okay. Okay. So why do you have so many leagues, though? Like, damn, it's 85 leagues. Except their moms at this part. But you get the idea. Unless you really get into soccer, you'll never hear about anything below the Premier League again. But just so you're aware of what's happening down there. This system does a few things. First off, just because you're near the bottom of the standings, your games can still be extremely important. They still count because you're not trying to win the league anymore, but now you're trying to literally stay in the league. And the higher the league you're in, the higher the check you get from TV contracts. So it's Ooh, kind of a big deal. Okay. 
Okay. It also creates this kind of theoretical meritocracy where you could start a team with a bunch of guys anywhere in the country, get into a kind of a tiny league, and then ultimately work your way up to the Premier League. Yeah. In reality, that'd be like trying to take a single-A baseball team and work your way up to the majors while the other better teams with bigger pocketbooks are trying to buy all your best players the whole way. Uh, yeah, but right. for the teams at the top, just winning the Premier League sounds pretty easy. You're, you're playing maybe one game a week. But that's the catch. There's other things going on here. So there's also the Carabao Cup, which is a tournament open to the top four leagues in England. And then there's the FA Cup, which has been going on since, like, forever. That it's Wait, FA, what? which is a tournament open to the top. There's other things going on here. So there's also the Carabao Cup, which is a tournament open to the top four leagues in England, and then there's the FA Cup, which has been going on since like forever. That it's literally open to every like team in England. So over 700 teams entered this one tournament last year. Like mm-hmm. imagine if every major and minor league baseball team had one giant tournament. Yeah. So could any team win? Yes, they could. Will the small teams upset the bigger teams? At some point, maybe a few will. But is it likely that a non-Premier League team is going to win? No, probably not. So more fun to think about in theory than practically, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Oh God, though, because but like you said, though, it could happen if somebody come out and be sweet as hell. You could do it, though. No cap. So more fun to think could about do it. in theory than practically, I guess. You could do it for sure. The final tournament is the the big one. Like, what if we could find the best team in Europe? And I don't mean like each country gets a team. That's the European Championship that happens every four years. This I'm talking about the league clubs. So the best teams in, from all over Europe. From 55 different countries battle it out each year. This is the UEFA Champions League. So as a side note on these acronyms here, FIFA is the organization that runs like big international tournaments like the World Cup and they help to coordinate things across different regions. If you're an American you probably heard of FIFA because somebody on SportsCenter mentioned somebody that was involved with some kind of corruption investigation or something. Anyway, within FIFA... I heard of FIFA because of the game. That's the only reason I know of FIFA. Somebody that was involved with some kind of corruption investigation. Damn, this is really crazy to look at, though. Like, bro, this is really worldwide, though. It's really worldwide. Dang, bro. That's crazy. That's crazy. So let me ask you a question. Also, too, if you're watching this far, thank you so much, all right? I love you. Now, to see who's really watching this far, we're going to play a little game, all right? The game is... For you to comment a word. The word of the day is FIFA. Comment FIFA so I know who watching this for. But what I'm going to say is, um, I kind of, I, I forgot what I was going to say, to be honest. Forgot. <laughs> I forgot, bro. But, bro, it's crazy how this is worldwide. Like, sheesh. Anybody on sports across different regions. If you're an American, you probably heard of FIFA because somebody on SportsCenter mentioned somebody that was involved with some kind of corruption investigation or something. Anyway, within FIFA, the world is divided into six different regions. UEFA is Europe. That's where, like, the best players go. CONCACAF, you may have heard of because that's what the U.S. is in, the Confederation of North, Central, American, and Caribbean Association of Football, which is okay. short and sweet. And then there's, like, the rest of the world. And each one of these groups has tournaments with national teams and their league clubs like the CONCACAF Champions League and the UEFA Champions League. And these are called like the Champions League, but really it's just a tournament. So the UEFA Champions League is played in conjunction with the UEFA Europa League, which is kind of like the NCAA and NIT basketball tournaments, but with a bit of a twist. They play the qualifying rounds for the Champions League first. So if you get knocked out of the big boy tournament, but you finish high enough, you can just move down into the Europa League and try to win that. And I won't get into the qualifying, but typically you're going to have teams that you may have heard of as a as an American, like Manchester City. Yep, Liverpool. I've heard of Manchester. Yep, that's probably Manchester United is the one I hear about. I think that's what one of one of the people play for me. Manchester United, Tottenham Hotspur, from Spain. They probably Barcelona, Barcelona Ma- uh, Madrid, Madrid, yeah, Real Madrid, Madrid, Madrid. Yep. Syria from Italy. Nope. We'll have Juventus and Inter no, and Roma and Atalanta. Germany is pretty much dominated by Borussia Dortmund and Bayern Munich. So definitely, and, definitely Manchester United and Real Madrid and uh, Barcelona, Barcelona, for sure. And then there's other popular teams okay. like Paris Saint Germain from PSG. France, I think I heard that. from France and Ajax from the Netherlands. 
and then you throw in a few Russian teams and you're ready to party. So back to the Premier League. You remember how your team's playing that kind of standard 38-game schedule. So now, also at the same time, you're competing in the Premier League, the Carabao Cup, the FA Cup, and the Champions League. And there's like a bunch of other small one-off games happening too. So even if you have the best team, you're still probably not going to win all these tournaments just because of the wear and tear. If you can win three trophies in a year, that's like special. That's called a treble. If you mm. win four, that's called a quadruple, but that's pretty rare. Mm. And so, the so biggest, what teams have, so who, so that's all I need to know. I need to go back and see what is the like top teams ever to do that, to go three, you know what I'm saying, won three games or three or quadruple, they won a quadruple. Like, that's why, what's, why, what's the best team ever? What was the best team ever in soccer? Or in the European League. His payday is for winning your league. Although I, for some reason, find the Champions League is hard to beat for excitement. So even though you can, soccer teams tend to trade players less than they do in the U.S. Mm. Rather, teams will just buy players from their current club. So a contract is going to include your salary, obviously, but also something called a release clause, which is a fee that would go to the current club for that player. So while any team could negotiate a transfer fee with a player's current club, a release clause takes that current team just out of negotiations altogether. So a baseball player, unhappy with the situation, he could demand a trade, and they might trade him and he'd be happy. But if they refuse to trade him, then he's kind of stuck. Whereas a soccer player could just find another team willing to pay that release clause. And once a Oh, team... okay, I get it. Okay, I get it. So, yeah, yeah. So it's like... It's like you have like a price. So it's basically like kind of like buying. Is it like buying out your contract? Is that basically what it is? I feel like that's what it is. So like if, if say like oh I my salary is seventy thousand, but I want it to be a hundred thousand. Um, a, another team could just buy your release clause, which is only fifty thousand, or you know what I say whatever the, the number would be, and now you can go straight to that team. So okay, soccer player. But do you have to? Do you have to? But what if they buy a release clause, but they don't pay for the salary that you want? You know what I'm saying? Then what? Do they just give you whatever? Like, But if they refuse to trade him, then he's kind of stuck. And trader, unhappy with the situation, he could demand a trade. And they might trade him and he'd be happy. But if they refuse to trade him, then he's kind of stuck. Whereas a soccer player could just find another team willing to pay that release clause. And once a team agrees to pay the clause then they can just negotiate directly with that player. Obviously, the better player, the higher the fee is going to be, so the current club can go out and find a reasonable replacement. Another big difference is that while most sports in the U.S. have a trade deadline, and that's followed by a few weeks afterward where players cannot move to another team, soccer is kind of the opposite. So most of the time, you cannot move to another team. There are two periods a year called transfer windows that you can move during usually before and then halfway through the season. Mm. You can sign a new contract for another team whenever, but you can't actually start playing for them until... Okay, so Germany, Spain, and France. I feel like those are the top teams right there. Germany, Spain, and France. Yeah. Next transfer window. And the last thing in terms of contracts is that in the U.S., most leagues have a draft, but soccer is pretty much like the Wild West. So teams will sign players or just say kids, like into the youth academy very young, like 10, 8 years old. And smaller teams who find a really good player could also include something called a sell-on clause when selling a player to a larger team that says, if the team buying that player turns around and sells the player again to an even bigger club, then that original team will get a percentage of that secondary sale. All right, so if you're still here at this point, you probably want more. So what's next? There are like an unlimited number of top go- or best goal compilations on YouTube, which are kind of interesting in the sense that you can actually show you know, new people to soccer the potential that the game has. Lots of Americans' exposure to soccer is like the Women's World Cup, and obviously we have a great team there, but you never really get to see that what different strategies look like. Like, look up Barcelona Tiki Taka videos. You won't regret that. They make grown men look like children. As I mentioned, the... All or Nothing series on Man City is great if you have Amazon Prime. And obviously just watching games is good. FIFA TV has a YouTube channel. So what I want to do basically is um, make videos. Like I want to learn with y'all. That's, what I that's, that's my whole goal is for us to learn together. 
Um, so y'all can let me know what videos I'm react to in the comment section. Like I said, I'm doing literally all of them. Um, yeah, yeah. What's international matches, or just look on YouTube for full football matches. If you're smart, you'll find them. Hello, motherfucker. Um, UEFA TV has old. Fuck you go. Champions League for full YouTube channel Prime, and obviously just watching. The hell happened to my audio? Games is good. Oh yeah, y'all can hear, but I can't. I'm confused. FIFA TV. Oh, let me refresh. Yo, my computer is broke right now. Well, I guess I'm in the video. I love y'all. We out.